Welcome to the Small Business Pulse episode three. Today we have Mike Riley with us, the one of the owners of Dewey Beer Company uh, in Dewey Beach, Delaware. Hello, Mike. How are you, man? Doing well. How are you? Uh, hanging in there, man. Hanging in. Yeah, so you were just kind of telling me a little bit about some of the difficulties you guys have been going through since um, COVID's really taken over our country and state and southern Delaware as we know it. So can you can you just say a little bit about what's been going on for you the past month? Uh, sure. I mean, so our experience I don't think is very different from anyone else. Um, it's been incredibly stressful in terms of trying to figure out where the money's coming from but it's also just stressful just trying to uh well you know trying to be flexible and adapt to the situation um that's lent itself it's a difficult situation but you know in the grand scheme i don't think we're any different from any other business i think this has affected all of delaware um and we're just in our own little bubble trying to figure it out um so I guess just, you know, like, I just, I look at it that way a lot. I just try to maintain that composure and just say, hey, you know, like, this isn't just us. It's it's the entire world. It's not like a rain cloud just falling over you. Right. It's, it's not like, oh, why can't it work out for us? No, it's it's yeah. everyone. It's everyone. And we have, a, we're in this world of hospitality. And, you know, it's everybody we know, our family you know, our wives, everybody works in this industry and it's affected everybody. So with that, you know, there's not this dark cloud following us. It's just this dark cloud, you know, yeah. It's, it's, you just have to remember that. I think when you're making these calls and trying to work through it, um, we're not alone, you know? So and that actually does bring comfort. You know, it's not just us. It's just the world. It's just what it is right now. So it helps put things into perspective a little bit more. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think perspective is huge right now. I really do. And I, I'm not trying to like use that casually. I think it is, it really is. So now you also at your, you have a restaurant and you serve food there as well. So are you currently doing any type of takeout? Yeah. Yes, okay. we are. But it's, it's definitely not what it should be. I mean, what we normally do and what, you know, what our normal sales and everything else, like it's not where it should be. Um, we're, we're happy to do it and we're, ha we're, we're proud to do it and we're also like thankful we can do it so those things all play in a, a, a factor there but you know it's not our sales obviously haven't been where they need to be um, to maintain everything we need yeah now prior to all this how far were you distributing your um, beverages you you can your beers and distribute yeah. throughout the state or is it a so wider range a, a local I wouldn't even call it regional yet. We're okay. local. Um, in the beer world, you know, we look at everything as a, a radius. And right now we're very, very, very much local. We've been focusing on Delaware with scratching the surface on Maryland. Um, we are a brew pub technically. So we just try to do everything in house, keep it very local, keep it very close to the chest. Um, however, we were scratching the surface on trying to get out and see what, you know, Maryland had to offer a PA, a little bit of that, but not. I couldn't say we were like completely taking that, you know, by storm. Um, and so people are still getting after our stuff, thank God. Um, and we're still brewing, you know, pretty heavy. But um, the way we distribute and the way we hit our target market has de definitely changed, you know, how we approach that. So has the process of brewing, has that slowed down at all? I know you don't have to really work in close quarters with other people all the time but being in your restaurant your brew pub previously i know that the there isn't a ton of room back there so i don't know um if you've had to kind of modify those work conditions well we've only had i i currently work with two and a half employees um there's me i have our lead brewer um and then we have an assistant who's full-time and it was us three for the most part, plus another part-time. And before the whole apocalypse, I call it, um, really came to play, we were already working hand in hand. So there was no sense in just stopping that. We were already like, you know, shoulder to shoulder and, you know, elbow to elbow. Um, however, we've made incredible changes at the restaurant itself and how we deal with customers and how we try to, we followed all the CDC guidelines and all that stuff. So 
but in terms of brewing beer right now, we're, we're, we're full on with the, a very limited skeleton crew that we already had. So it wasn't a big change also because we were already, you know, shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow. So it wasn't yeah. a big change. Okay. And since this has all taken place, obviously you're doing more takeout um, and you've made that type of adjustment. Is there anything else that you've kind of had to evolve into creating a little bit more revenue? Uh, well, what's interesting is how we package our beer. As a brew pub, we were always in-house consumption. So when you go to a brew pub, right, you're just drinking beer that's made on site. Yep. Um, what we changed was we used to save half of our allotment for in-house consumption and then half of the allotment for, say, cans or crowlers or some kind of to-go package. Um, that's obviously changed to complete to-go because we, you know, there's no reason to come in and sit down at the bar. You can't do that. So that's been a huge change, I think. Um, and it's obviously changed the way we do ordering and, and how we operate our brewery, which is, on a brewery standpoint, is a big deal, like changing completely to production to, excuse me, um, maintaining a brew pub so it, it's been a it's been a challenge because it wasn't something we do yeah so now as a brew pub um i haven't heard about this in a few weeks but there was a 40 percent cost of your bill it, you couldn't have over 40 percent of your bill be alcohol related is that still in place currently so the rule was technically 60, 40 split. So when you run a restaurant in general, you want to have a 60% towards food sales and then 40% towards alcohol sales. And that, that applies to not just brew pubs, but that, uh, that applies to all restaurants. And so um, we always maintain that split, um, believe it or not, even as a primarily a brew pub, but people, you know, they want to eat while they drink, or drink beer. So that is not necessarily in play at this moment. And, not that we're trying to take advantage of anything, um, but we're just trying to survive. And yeah. under the, uh, you know, the helpful watch of the ABC, they're like, this, just do what you got to do. They're not, hopefully, you know, we're not stepping on toes. We're not trying to push the limits. We're just trying to survive. And as soon as things go back to normal, we'll go, okay, 60, 40 is back into play. Yeah. Um, believe it or not, I mean, our split's not that bad. It's not like crazy, you know, 10, 90 or anything like that. It's more like 50, 50 now, but. Okay. Yeah, that does play a role, yeah. Have you begun to brainstorm anything? There's talks of this possibly coming back in the fall or winter again, um, where we might have to go under social distancing guidelines again. Have you been able to brainstorm any ideas that would help you tolerate those times better if it doesn't ha happen again? Yeah, we, we have that conversation almost daily. Um, I think... In my opinion, trying to run a small business, obviously flexibility. We are very, we're very uh, fortunate that we have a to-go product. For example, our canned beer and our to-go beer. We're very fortunate for that. Um, in terms of making food, there isn't much more we can do. So I, you know, like aside from becoming completely to-go, trying to get staff work, um, trying to keep people employed doing all the things we can as a small business to weather the storm in terms of like, if it flares back up, I think we just have to like reach back into our pocket of tricks and just keep using them because honestly, like we made quick adjustments. We've obviously made some minor adjustments as we go, but really just brewing beer to go is all we can do. I mean, that's yeah. what we do anyway. We make beer, you know, we make beer, we make food. And unless people are coming to get the beer and food, you know, that's all we can do. And it's really good beer and really good food, I might add. Very much appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> um, do you sell gift cards? Yeah, we do. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you can go online or come in, you know, we'll, we'll do it through the, uh, we have a to-go window technically. If you've ever been to the spot, we have that, uh, those roll up doors. We just yep. turn some of the doors into a to-go spot. Gotcha. So I'll put a link to those gift cards down below. So if anybody wants to help support the local small businesses, such as Dewey Beer Company, they can certainly do that yeah. by clicking one of the links below. Yeah. Um, have you thought of any, like maybe marketing ideas to help keep your name out in the public um, during these times? I'm glad you asked. Uh, no, tech, so there's a beer out on the market put out by uh, Other Half up in New York. 
and it's all we're all in this together um we are brewing uh in the brew world we're brewing 15 barrel batch um and we're going to can it and 100 percent of the proceeds go towards the hospitality industry there's a couple of charities out there right now trying to uh help any help anybody in desperate need so what we're going to do is, is make the beer uh, the label company, the can company, all these people are providing these uh, materials to actually package the materials. We're donating our time, our energy, our tanks, um, our you know our water, everything, uh, and we're brewing this beer, and we're going to charge what we normally charge, and then all the proceeds, everything we make, every dollar we make, is going to go into a charity fund, you know, strictly for. The people we care about who are in this industry were suffering the most. You know, they were on the front lines. They were the first to lose their jobs when the you know, whole shit storm came down and they said, hey, you know, restaurants are shut down. So, yeah, you know, that Im immediately like struck, uh, you know, my heart. I was like, all right, so we're going to do this beer. It's like just a little, the least we can do to say thank you, to do anything we can do. You know, we're as a business trying to survive. We're trying to get through this. Um, and this is one little, like, one little, like, just token of good faith that we say, hey, like, we wouldn't be a business if it weren't for these people. And yeah. they're hurting the most, you know, they're, they're literally just, their income's dried up. Absolutely. But, so that's what we're doing. Um, we're making this beer. It was, it was not our idea. It was other half. Um, we're doing it with Burnish uh, in Maryland. Um, there will be, like, 120 cases of beer for sale again all the proceeds at 100 percent of the proceeds go towards that charity so and i'm sure you'll provide me with a link to that and i'll put yeah. that in the description as well um have you thought about something a little bit more it, what i'm trying to do with from here on out is come up with an idea that i want to impart on people i interview and just see if you think it's a good idea or not but i thought for all these people at home um maybe putting on like a may or june um beer tasting competition where everybody is, brews some beer at home submits them to you and you declare a winner that can go into flights or something um and then proceeds can go to whomever or just straight into your pockets i'm 100 percent behind stuff like that i mean all right spark that interest in the crowd like i think that's always fun but also uh, yeah i mean Dewey Beer gets behind our community. I mean, we just talked about it today. We're like, look, we, we're nobody without our community. So uh, any kind of thing that brings people together that enjoys those good times, like we're, we're hundred percent supportive. So yeah, absolutely. Um, there are little legal loopholes that we have to worry about if you're going to make alcohol for the consumption of people. Um, but we can work those out, but yeah, hundred percent, man. Like what is it? A hundred gallons? Uh, it's not necessarily that it's you know you can't you can't sell it and where to just it would, yeah I, i'm just saying i think it would be cool if people made a batch you declared a winner and then we figure something else out beyond that so maybe some loopholes would, would to be, be willing to agree to if there was you know like uh voting and everything and then make that recipe on the, the system for distribution yeah something like that that would be fun all right, so, maybe we can figure something about. Maybe we can figure that out. Be excited to make it on a big system. So, yeah, so, sounds good we, to me. Hundred percent. Is there anything you would like to say to the viewers, or um, any way else, any any other way that we could possibly help support you and uh, do a beer company? It's not just necessarily us. Just support local business, man. I mean, right now, like, you know, this is your neighbor. This is everyone around us. This is affected everybody. Um, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and play our, you know, sad little tune that we're the only ones affected. Uh, you know, just remember like the people next to you, they're the ones suffering. Just, just go to your local business and just tip them five bucks instead of three, you know, like that goes a long way. They notice that it helps. They're not, I, I promise they're not, they're not going out on the town <laughs> spending the money like crazy. They're, they're paying their bills. Um, yep, especially now. Yeah, and Dewey Beer has always tried to do the right thing, right by our people, right by our our, pe our, uh, our customers, right by our uh, employees. Um, and right now, we're just in the fight of our lives. So, as is everybody, you know, yes. I'm not singing this sad tune. Everybody is. So, 
um, just try to remember that when we go to your local brewery, like we're, we're trying to maintain payroll. We're trying to maintain production. We're trying to just keep, keep people in the loop doing their thing. And it's, it's, it's a total sense of community. I think we need to like, we need to, there's power in the people, you know? Absolutely. I think now's as good a time as any to really rally together and help really? support our local small businesses and each other as uh, humans. Do take um, out if you can afford it. Um, you know, throw a tip on your, you know, I go to Starbucks still. I can't, I can't help it. I wear my mask. Um, but I think, you know, every time they're very, you know, they're generous. They're, that's all I, I it's, this is so hard. It's so yeah. hard. It's been hard on me. It's been hard on our business. It's been hard on everybody. So just try to remember that when you're having a conversation with somebody, you know? Yeah. That's, yeah. Well, I appreciate your time, yeah, Mike. And, um, Hopefully we can do this again when times are a little different. Yeah. I'd be happy to chime in uh, if you want to do a follow-up or anything. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'll and let to you all know, the, you covered. <laughs> all right. Uh, and to all the viewers, please click the link below and we will keep you up to date. Um, if something happens with a uh, brew your own beer at home taste testing for the future, but uh, links below help support local small businesses. Thank you, Mike from Dewey beer company. And we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers, buddy. Cheers.